lecture, I will start with probability of an event. The probability P of A of an event A from the finite sample space S is given by the ratio between the cardinality of A and the cardinality of S. So, it can be written in this way also number of favorable outcomes for the event A divided by number of all possible outcomes. To find the probability of an event A, we sum all the probabilities assigned to the sample points in A. This sum is called the probability of A and is denoted by P of A which is like this. Now, from this we can easily say one thing that probability of the whole sample space is always 1. So, we can write in this way that summation of P of x, x belonging to S is equal to 1. So, let us consider one example in this context. For the experiment of rolling a die, the sample space consists of 6 samples. If we suppose that probability of occurrence of any outcome is equal, then the probability of getting an odd number is equal to 3 by 6 that is half, because there are only 6 possibilities in the sample space. So, sample space contains 6 sample points. So, so, that is why the denominator is 6 and the numerator is 3, because the number of favorable cases will be 1, 3 and 5, because these are the odd numbers available in a die. So, that is why 
it will be 3 by 6 which is half. Now, let us consider another example. Uh, it is very, very important example. Um, let us Suppose that a die is loaded so that the numbers through 6 are equally likely to appear. but that 1 is three times as likely as any other to appear. Now, to model this situation, we should have probability of 2 equal to probability of 3 equal to probability of 4 equal to probability of 5 equal to probability of 6 and another condition is probability of 1 is equal to 3 into probability of 2. Since we know that summation p of x x belonging to S is equal to 1. That is why probability of 1 plus probability of 2 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 4 plus probability of 5 plus probability of 6 will be equal to 1. So, we can write that 3 into probability of 2 plus 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 probability of 2. So, that will be equal to 1. So, from this we can find the value of 
probability of 2 which is equal to 1 by 8. So, we can find probability of 1 that is 3 by 8. So, now if we have to find the probability of an odd number, it will be probability of 1 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 5 and that will be 3 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 which is 5 by 8. Another very uh, known and important problem we can discuss that is uh, known as birthday problem. So, the problem is uh, like this, find the probability that among n persons at least two people have birthdays on the same month and date but not necessarily in the same year. Assume that all months and dates are equally likely and ignore February twenty nine. But this. So, let E denotes the event th that at least two persons. have the same birthday. So, the event E prime will be the event that no two persons have the same
birthday. Now it is easier to compute probability of E prime than probability of E. And we can find probability of E from the fact that probability of E plus probability of E prime is equal to 1. Since all months and dates are equally likely and we are ignoring February 29 birthday, the size of the sample space will be 365 to the power 9 uh, n sorry n because there are n persons. So, that is why the sample space will contain 365 to the power n sample points. The first person's birthday can occur on any one of 365 days. If no two persons have the same birthday, the second person's birthday can occur on any day except the day of the first person's birthday. Therefore, the second person's birthday can occur on any one of remaining 364 days. So, first person's birthday can occur in 365 days, then second person's birthday can occur on any one of remaining 364 days, then similarly if we proceed third person's birthday can occur in 363 ways or we can say uh, it can occur on any one of the remaining 363 days. In this way if we proceed we can say that the size of the event that size of the event E prime that no two persons have the same birthday, no two persons have the same birthday. The size of this event will be 365 into 364 into 363 in this way, the last one will be 365 minus n plus 1 because there are n persons. Therefore, the probability that at least two persons have birthdays on 
on the same month and date is 1 minus Three sixty five into three sixty three in sorry three sixty four into three sixty three in this way three sixty five minus n plus one divided by three sixty five to the power n. Now, if we consider n equal to 22, so that means if there are 22 persons, then this probability will be, then the probability is 0 0.47569. If n is equal to 23, then the probability is 0 0.507297. Thus, thus if n is greater than equal to 23, The probability is is greater than half that at least two persons have birthdays on the same month and date. So, from this problem, this is our conclusion. So, that is uh, like this, if uh, there are more than or equal to 23 persons, the probability is greater than half that at least two persons have birthdays on the same month and date. Here is uh, another example. This is also very in interesting example. Ten men went to a party and checked their hats when they arrived. The hats were randomly returned to them when they departed. We want to know the probability that no man gets his own hat sorry own hat back for the experiment of returning the hats to the men the sample space consists of 10 factorial samples corresponding to the 10 uh, factorial possible permutations of the hats. 
let us assume that each permutation occurs with equal probability that is 1 by 10 factorial. Consequently, the probability that no man receives his own hat is equal to 1 by 10 factorial times the number of permutation in which no man receives his own hat. Let a fact a i uh, event, this is an event, let a i uh, denotes the set of samples in which the ith man receives his own hat. So, the number of favorable cases that at least one person will get his own hat can be written as uh, this cardinality of a 1 union a 2 union a 3 dot dot union a 10. So, now how can we find this cardinality? So, that is the next challenge. So, let us uh, consider. So, we have a 1 union a 2 a 10. So, this can be written as summation i equal to 1 to 10 cardinality of a i minus summation i less than j of the cardinality a i intersection a j plus summation i less than j less than k cardinality a i intersection a j intersection a k minus so on. So, it will continue in this way. The last entry will be minus 1 to the power 10 minus 1. So, that will be 9 <coughs> cardinality of a 1 intersection a 2 intersection so on intersection a 10. So, this is coming by inclusion exclusion principle which has already been covered in set theory. So, we have like this. Now, what is this summation of the cardinality a i? So, that means, here we have to find the number of ways that one person will get the hat correctly. So, that means, number of ways one person will get his own hat. So, let us come to now this
slide here summation i equal to 1 to 10 cardinality of a i. The number of ways that one person will get his own hat is 10 choose 1. So, for each of these cases the other arrangements can occur in 9 factorial ways. So, that is why the resulting number of ways will be 10 choose 1 into 9 factorial. In this way, the next one is that that two persons will get their own hat and that number is 10 choose 2 and for each of these ways the other ad arrangements can occur in 8 factorial ways. So, the resulting number of ways will be 10 choose 2 into 8 factorial ways. So, in this way the last one will be 10 choose 10 0 into 0 factorial. So, there 10 people will get their own hat in 10 choose 10 ways. So, in this way if we find the cardinality of a 1, a 2 and so on union a 10. then we can find the probability that no man receives his own hat in this way. So, it will be 1 by 10 factorial into 10 factorial minus the cardinality of a 1, a 2 up to union a 10. So, that cardinality which is nothing but 10 choose 1 into 9 factorial minus 10 choose 2 into two, uh, 8 factorial up to minus 10 choose 10 into 0 factorial. So, the term inside the bracket is coming in this way that uh, number of all possible cases which we have already noted down that is 10 factorial. So, 10 factorial minus that uh, cardinality of a 1, a 2 union a 10 will give this term inside this bracket which will give the number of ways that no man receives his own hat and we are dividing it by 10 factorial to get the probability of this event. So, it will be 1 minus 1 by 1 factorial plus 2 by 2 factorial minus 3 by 3 factorial and so on up to plus 10 by 10 factorial. 
So, if we calculate this, we will get the value 0 0.36788. Now, there are three axioms of probability. 0 less than equal to probability of A less than equal to 1 for any event A, this is the first axiom. Second axiom is probability of a sample space is 1, which we have already mentioned. Now, if uh, A 1, A 2 to A 3, A, if sorry A 1, A 2, A 3 and so on is a sequence of mutually exclusive events, then probability of A 1 union A 2 union A 3 union like this will be equal to probability of A 1 plus probability of A 2 plus probability of A 3 plus so on. So, this is a uh, sum of the probabilities of this events, individual probabilities of this events. So, uh, the first axiom is uh, obvious, second axiom is also obvious, we have already mentioned. Now, what about the third one? Before going to this ax axiom, let us prove one result here. Let E 1 and E 2 be events, then probability of E 1 union E 2 is equal to probability of E 1 plus probability of E 2 minus probability of E 1 intersection E 2. The proof is like this, let E 1 is equal to x 1, x 2 to x i, E 2 is equal to y 1, y 2 to y j. Then E 1 intersection E 2 is considered as z 1 z 2 to z k. So, let us describe this by Venn diagram. So, it will be like this. So, this is E 1 event this is E 2 and this one is E 1 intersection E 2. So, E 1 is having the members x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6, x 7 and E 2 is having 6 members y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4, y 5 and y 6 and E 1 intersection E 2 will be like this, it is 
having two members Z, Z1 and Z2 and Z1 is same as X2 which is same as X4, Y4. So, X2 and Y4 are same. So, those are denoted as Z1 and X5 and Y5 are same. So, those these two are denoted by Z2. So, E1 intersection E2 will contain two members Z1 and Z2. And assume that each set element is listed exactly one time per set. Then in the list x 1, x 2, x i, y 1, y 2 to y j, z 1, z 2 to z k, So, in this uh, list x 1, x 2 to x i, y 1, y 2 to y j, z 1, z 2 to z k occurs twice. So, from this it follows that probability of E 1 union E 2 will be equal to summation probability of x t t equal to 1 to i plus summation probability of y t t equal to 1 to j minus summation probability of z t t equal to 1 to k and this is equivalent to probability of E 1 plus probability of E 2 minus probability of E 1 intersection E 2. because we have already seen that z 1, z 2 to z k occurs twice if we list x 1, x 2 to x i, y 1, y 2 to y j. So, that is why one, uh, one, one time we are subtracting it from this list. So, we will get probability of E 1 union E 2. So, once it is proved, then we can consider the third axiom of probability, which says that probability of A union B will be probability of A plus probability of B. When A and B are mutually exclusive events. So, this will come from the previous uh, one previous result that is we know that probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So, this result is in general. Now, if A and B are mutually exclusive, we know A intersection B will be equal to phi. And that is why probability of A union B will be 
simply probability of A plus probability of B because probability of A intersection B will become 0. In this way, if there are 3 mutually exclusive events A, B, C, then from the inclusion exclusion principle we know that probability of A union B union C is probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection C plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. So, since A, B, C are mutually exclusive events, all these probabilities will be equal to 0 and that is why we will get A union B union C equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C. So, let us consider the third axiom here. It says that, that there are mutually exclusive events A 1, A 2, A 3. So, infinite number of mutually exclusive events. So, probability of A 1 uh, union A 2 union A 3 union. Uh, so, it will continue. So, this will be the sum of the probabilities, individual probabilities of A 1, A 2, A 3 and so on. Because the same reason, uh, the probability of the event A, inter A 1 intersection A 2, A 1 intersection A 3 will all vanish and that is why we will get only the sum of these probabilities. So, let us uh, discuss now the conditional probability. The probability that event A occurs given that event B has already occurred is defined as the conditional probability of event A given the occurrence of event B which is denoted by probability of A given B. So, this for example, suppose a die is thrown then if it is asked to find the probability that 4 will appear given that even number has occurred. So, the probability that 4 appeared given that even number appeared will be equal to 1 by 3 because um, even numbers there are only 3 even numbers 2, 4, 6. So, among this the probability that 4 will occur with uh, probability. So, probability that 4 will occur will be 1 by 3. So, in general let probab uh, P uh, subscripts B of X i denote the probability associated with exam uh, with sample X i given that event B has occurred. Now, for X i does not belong to B probability uh, subscripts P of X i will be equal to 0. However, for the samples in event B their relative frequencies of occurrence 
remain the same while the sum of their probabilities should equal to 1 that is summation of probability subscripts b of x i uh, such that this x i belong to b that will be equal to 1. Consequently, we need to scale the probability to each of these samples up from probability of x i to probability of x i divided by probability of b. Thus, we have probability of x i is equal to 0 when x i does not belong to b and probability of x i divided by probability of b when x i belongs to b. It follows that probability of a given b is equal to summation p b of x i and that is equal to summation x i belonging to a intersection b probability of x i divided by probability of b. Now, 1 by probability of b we can take out of this summation. So, we will get 1 by probability of b into summation x i belongs to a intersection b of probability of x i and that is equal to probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b. So, we are getting the definition of conditional probability in this way. So, probability of A given B is probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. So, let us take one example in this context. Three dice were rolled. Given that no two faces were the same what is the probability that there was an S? Let A denote the event that there was an S and B the event that no two faces were the same. Now, probability of B will be Six P three that is nothing but six into five into four. Why is it this? The first one. So what is B actually? B the event that no two faces were the same. So the first dice can give six outcomes. So there are six possibilities. Now one outcome has already occurred from the first dice and that can occur in six ways. So, once that occurs the second dice will give five possible outcomes because the number which has already occurred in the first dice that is discarded from the list. So, that is why it will be 6 into 5. Then once the first one and second one have occurred, the third dice will give the outcomes in 4 possible ways because the first outcome and second outcome we have to discard from the list. So, there will be uh, 4 uh, outcomes remain. So, that is why we will have total number of outcomes 6 into 5 into 4 which is 6 p 3 and all possible cases what is the number of all possible cases it will be 6 cube. Okay. So, 3 dice are there so that is why 6 into 6 into 6 6 cube. Next, we have to find the probability that A intersection B that is both 
A and B will occur. A is the event that there was an S and B the event that no two faces were the same. Now, if one is already fixed, one is an S. So, that is why there will be only five possibilities because A and B both will occur. So, that is why that outcome is gone from two dices. So, that is why it will be 5 p 2, 3 into 5 p 2. So, 3 dice are there. So, for each of this case we will have 5 p 2 possibilities. So, that will be so, total number of cases will come 3 into 5 p 2 and the denominator is 6 q because this is the number of all possible cases. So, probability of A intersection B will become 3 into 5 p 2. Thus, probability of A given B will become 3 into 5 p 2 divided by 6 p 3. If we calculate this, we will get half. So, the conditional probability will be half. So, this is the end of this lecture. Thank you.